Okay. Hi guys. Um, happy June. Welcome to our monthly team call. So glad to see your faces and thanks for coming on a little earlier tonight. Um, our guest is from Prince Edward Island in Canada. And so it's 830 her time. Um, so, you know, an hour later was asking, asking a lot. Um, so Sarah Bernard, I'm so excited that she's talking to us tonight. She, um, Sarah is amazing. She really caught my ear at Summit last year, caught my eye ear um, when Zaya was giving, you know, recognition away and they like the last, I feel like it was like one of the last awards, but it said, you know, this person has achieved is the only person in the company who's ever achieved the three by 2500 every month for 12 months straight. And it was Sarah. And I was like, okay, this is this girl i'm gonna watch her and now i think it's been two straight years right sarah okay so two straight years of the three by 2500 um and i've gotten to know her um you know pretty well um in this business and i just like you so much sarah she is so down to earth i think you guys are gonna find that um and this team is really down to earth too sarah i don't know if it I don't know what it is, but these people are just so down to earth, really great people. I feel like we're going to mesh really well. Um, but Sarah is super humble and just a really hard worker, um, which I think is, is who we are as a team, too. Um, she has personally sponsored 150 reps, so 150 reps on her first level. And she's a Zaya executive. She's a mom of four, right, Sarah? And she was in Hawaii with, she brought her daughters on this last trip. So they're kind of taking turns and that was really fun to see her um, share this gift with her kids. So I'm not gonna share the rest of your story, Sarah, cause I think you're gonna talk about some of that. So um, thank you so much for talking to us and you can take it away. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. Welcome everyone and thanks for showing up. That's always appreciated. Although I feel like the vibe like Katie, like you just said, it's very good. I can tell it's like, a, it's a warm, it's a warm group. Um, and I sort of like that. It's a bit of a smaller group. Um, when I was starting, I think I have to say that this is going to be so much more exciting for me than it is for you guys. But I have to say when I was starting out, I signed up for the discount and then I found out I needed to earn it as an income. Um, so I tried to work it as a business. I had about four or five levels above of me that were not available, that just weren't working it. So I Googled how to be a Zaya rep and Katie Harlan came up. So that is how I literally learned the things at the beginning. I was watching Katie's trainings and other people's trainings, but I've come full circle because I'm sitting here tonight, three years in, it's my anniversary today is the three year anniversary. And I am sitting here and I'm training Katie, Katie Harlan's team. And I just, I just can't, I just all day I've been like on cloud nine. So I'm super pumped, but, um, Thank you so much for, for having me first off. Um, I get to talk about my favorite thing tonight. I'm so excited. I love recruiting. I feel like I could talk about it and I probably do. My team is like, ugh, again, <laughs> like, I talk about it all the time. It's one of my favorite things and you'll soon realize why. Um, before we get into that, if you have any questions at any point, um, just, just put them in the chat and I'll grab them at the end. I talk fast. I have a lot to say all the time and I tend to not even see the chat sometimes because I get squirrel, so I'm focused, okay? Also, I couldn't find my glasses before the training and I need them to see. So this training could just really be fun tonight. Let's just have some fun with it. Let's see what happens. I, I don't know what I've written down, so, so we're just gonna go with it. Um, I was a paramedic uh, for 12 years. I worked 10 years nights, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. for 10 years. So that means that I switched all of my day shifts to nights for anybody in the healthcare system doing two on, two off. Um, it sucked. It really, really, really sucked. And as much as I was good at that job, I am so thankful that I don't have to do it anymore. But I bring it up because I learned several lessons in that job, a lot of which I probably won't talk about ever again, but a lot. I, more specifically, five lessons I've taken from that job and I've implemented as a leader and as growing, someone who grows their business in this company with, with direct sales. I feel like these lessons can kind of translate to all jobs really. But the first one, and the first one they teach you when you go to medic school, EMT school, is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And in other ways we say this in this, you know, already we say we have to slow down to speed up, 
I've heard Katie say that. I've heard that come out of her mouth on our podcast. Um, you know, and I've heard other people say that from corporate and stuff. So you guys already know that sort of thing, but slow is smooth and smooth is fast. In emergency, often things need to be done perfectly. And oftentimes the settings are not perfect. We're not in an ER, we are in a ditch or an elevator or third story apartment or, you know, wherever. And so speed and hustling tends to, you know, make errors happen and errors lead to not good outcomes. So they teach you, this is the first thing they teach you, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And I've learned that in the business, in, in growing your team, sometimes you can't do these huge steps. Sometimes you can't go as fast as you can, even though, you know, at the beginning of the month or that when they announce an incentive and you want to do all the things, well, you can't because it's too much and you'll mess up and, and then you'll lose steam and then you'll, you'll be back right at the beginning, right? So instead, I've learned to do really small actions really small actions. I'm talking like five minutes of day, consistent, small actions each day. And I find that that has led me to more success than the, than the mass action or the spurts of chaos or hustle. Um, and then and I have an actionable thing here, but I've been doing this for about two years and I've been adding three people, three from my suggested friends list. I make sure that our mutual friends are not others IR reps. Then I add them. I don't add them to my VIP. I don't add them anywhere else. I just add them on my personal profile because I feel like that is such an awesome spot for us to make the first connection. And, and I go from there. So that that's something I've been doing for, for two years. On Instagram, I do about five to 10 new follows a week, I would say. You know, I'm not crazy in there, but again, I don't have a lot of followers in there as well. So that the first lesson was slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The second lesson that, I, that I've taken they tell you to have a plan, but then they tell you it is impossible to make a plan as a paramedic. You can't, you physically can't. As soon as you get the call, well, first of all, you never know where you're gonna end up. And then as soon as you get a call for whatever, it's usually an unknown problem. So there you go, try making a plan for that. It's impossible. And then you have to take into account dogs at the house, trying to get past them. Maybe uh, it's burning, maybe the house is burning. Maybe the scene is not safe, maybe it's dark, maybe you can't see anything, maybe there's a weapon. It, it goes on and on and on, and I could really give you a million examples, but making a plan is impossible when, you, when you're a paramedic. And I feel like that is similar to this job because the settings always change, the circumstances always change, whether it's inflation or whether it's COVID or whether it's you know the, the valleys and, and the highs of this business, things are always changing. So it's hard to make a plan, but that's rule number two, make a plan. And we do this by solving for the problem. We do this by being flexible and we do this by making it known. As long as you make it known to people that you are growing your team, that you are looking to grow your team, that you're actively recruiting, that you love this business, once you make it known, you give people a space, you give people permission to approach you about it. You give people, you know, you, you make people comfortable because you are, you know, but if you don't bring it up and if it's a scavenger hunt on your Instagram or, you know, like do, if I went and looked on your Facebook, would I know right away that you are a Zai rep? It should be pretty clear, right? So making a plan is the, the second lesson. And even though circumstances are difficult, you know, it's hard to organize all of that stuff. Things are always changing. You always have to solve for the problem. I feel like in this business, those are the things that really help as well. Um, the third lesson, and this is probably my biggest thing that I've taken is persistence. Persist persistence is key. And I know, you know, consistency, and we talk about all this stuff all the time. And you guys, this stuff isn't going to, you know, blow your mind or anything, but dealing with patients in life threatening situations, or for instance, cardiac arrest, they're pretty serious. Even after extensive treatment and with no signs of life, we continue. We, we often continue way past that. We often continue to give shocks. We often continue to do rounds of CPR because you never know what shock, what round of CPR is going to bring them back. Don't know. It's not in a textbook. No one can tell you. We don't have all the machines there. So we just don't know. Persistence is key. But what is also key is that you can't have doubt. There was no way that I could do what I did if I thought in the back of my mind, well, they're never going to make it anyways. Pfft. No signs of life. Well, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just step back. <laughs> There was never a, a, a time that that happened. There was always, we were always just continuing 
and staying positive and just pushing through. And I feel like in this business, as soon as we hit periods of struggle, as soon as we hit like, you know, the speed bump, or maybe things are slowing down, or maybe you're not seeing the results you think you should be getting. It's like, oh, well, I guess it's just, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to work for me. Maybe I should quit. Maybe I'm not doing things right. You know, and we tend to like redo or rewrite lists and, and give up on that approach because it's not working, even though we've maybe only, you know, put in so much consistent action. So for me, this lesson is huge because it's really helped me continue with what I'm doing, those small actions each day, even if I'm not seeing the results, because I never know which day of consistent action is going to continue, is going to like make the breakthrough happen, right? If I've learned anything, it's that where there is struggle, and I don't know if you guys feel that lately, where there is struggle, you are so close to a breakthrough. And I haven't learned that with just with Zaya. I've learned that in my other job as well. And you cannot have a breakthrough without struggle. You just can't. You have to have your actions and your thoughts challenged for there to be a breakthrough. So if you're feeling like there's a struggle, I think you're on the right path. The fourth lesson, and probably the best, the one that I'm best at, is people will remember how you made them feel. And I, I remember being taught this in class. I think it was the second, third month. And I was just like, no, it's chaos. People, you know, it's people's worst days. It's emergencies. They're not going to remember me. You know, they're going to be in shock. They're going to be whatever. It doesn't matter what I do, just as long as I'm, you know, physically doing something to help them. But it's so much more than that. In, in this job as well. It's not just the sales. It's not just, you know, booking parties. It's that extra. As medics, we were, you know, trained to give that highest quality of care, regardless of setting, right? Regardless of ditch, burning house, you know, anywhere, right? We just had to give good care. But you will be present in some of, you know, people's darkest hours. It's just, that's the name of the game. And so what you do leaves a mark. And I learned that right away, good or bad. So that extra moment you took, right? Or that, that, that moment of silence you sat with a family member that just was given bad news or the pain for the coffee behind you. I mean, we do that just not even as medics, but just in life. I think that that extra thing is so important. And I feel like that's super important in this business too. Um, it takes nothing extra to be kind. And I've, I've done a thing where I do, you know, good morning. I hope you are well. That is not me asking you of anything. That is not expecting any response, but that's genuine. And I, I, you know, good morning or, you know, happy Saturday. I hope you're well, period. But I not only say this to my customers, potential reps, I also say it to my team, you know, and, and there's no expectation of like, how's I or what, what, you know, where are you or what, what are you doing? What do you need? It's just, I hope you're well. I hope, I hope you're doing okay, period. And I find that that is so important for the current climate because, you know, things are heavy. People have overflowing plates. And it's, I learned that as a medic, that that little extra goes so, so far. And people will remember that. And then the last lesson, which I really feel is key. <laughs> and I talk about this a lot with my team, is focus on what you can do. They teach you that right at the end, right when you graduate, to, to keep, it, keep it in mind that you are going to come up to your first call, you are going to realize that you are so overwhelmed that regardless of what you do, they may die anyways, because you're not an emergency room and you're only you. So they teach you this at the end, and it's focus on what you can do. And this is super important because there's about a million examples here I could give, none of which are light or happy stories. But I feel like, you know, 12 years in the back of the ambulance, in the ditch, you know, in the country, at a domestic with no cell service, you know, I, I could go on and on. Like, you have to focus on what you can do because there's so many times, especially in this business, that we say, well, I, I can't get the 10% commission or I can't can't recruit three people this month or it's January my team's not going to grow or I'm not going to get to that goal or it's just always about that because we feel like you know with the 30-day increments I feel like we're so goal-oriented but sometimes we don't hit them and then we get into this sense of like well I can't do it because it's whatever right at no point can you focus on the things you can't do and I learned this as a medic there is no vocabulary that I have 
no one will ever hear me say, well, I just can't do it. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to recruit. It's January or December or whatever. But I always just solve for the problem. It's an, it's an immediate in my mind. It's like, okay, well, what can I do? Well, I'm going to recruit one. I'm going to start with one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to share. And if I, and if I don't, you know, I'm going to share it because it's not my responsibility to have people sign up. I can only share about the rep opportunity. I can only share with as many people as I can because it means so much to me. And I feel like when I talk to my team about that, they're just like, oh, and I'm like, well, it's not about you. <laughs> you can only focus on what you could do. And if you keep telling yourself, well, you know, I'm not a good recruiter or we're never going to have a big team or we're never going to get to where we want to be, then that's what's going to happen. But you have to focus on what you can do. And those are that small, consistent actions that I do each day. Um, be, be okay with not doing the big things. Be okay with not doing them today or tomorrow or next week. Focus on the little things and do them consistently, but more importantly, do them well, right? And I feel like that makes so much more important. Like it's just, it's just, it has made such an impact on my business, just doing these things. I just could never sit back in the ambulance and be like, well, there's nothing I can do. You clearly need a surgeon. <laughs> I am not that. I just, good luck. We'll drive you to the hospital. <laughs> no, I had to, you know, treat for symptoms, stop the bleeding, do something, right? And at the end, it, sometimes it's just holding their hand. But all those, these lessons are great. And I'm sure you've heard them all before. There are some other things that I do actively to fill my funnel. And almost two years ago, I wrote down the top five things I loved about this business. And that's changed my life. About two years ago, I wrote down the top five things I loved about this business. And that's completely changed everything because I then didn't feel salesy when I talked about it. I then didn't feel like it was forced because I remembered the reasons why I love this business. And that's the great thing about this list. If you start doing this and you go back to it every three months, it's going to change. Those top five things that I loved about my business two years ago, I'm telling you, they're not the same as the top five now, but it's important to remember that, especially if your passion has sort of fizzled out, or maybe you're getting into the rhythm and you're kind of reached a plateau and you're not really, you know, you're not really excited anymore. Write down the top five things and you'll be surprised at what they are. I find this to be so effective because it's simple, but it also works. Um, and one of the top five reasons two years ago, and I'll share it, I get out of it what I put in. And for me, for then, it was income. For now, it's joy and time and, you know, it's changed, but it still is, I get out of it what I put in it. And I continue to share this because I didn't realize how much I needed this in my life. And, and uh, you know, like two years ago, it was the income, but now it's different, right? So it, it changes. My husband and I were working six jobs between us at one point. I worked nights for 10 years. That's a lot, right? And I could never seem to afford extracurriculars for my kids. I share this and I will continue to share this because I wish someone shared it with me earlier. I wish someone brought it up. And I say this because a lot of people aren't in that same situation. A lot of people join this because they really like the clothing or they, they love the community. But there's people out there who, you need to hear this story. You need to hear that people need to hear this. People need to be approached by this, that you're sitting on value, that, that you're sharing a gift. That, you know, Katie says that a lot too. I talk about the rep opportunity because I am talking to that particular audience and that will never change for me. I'm talking to that busy mom, the overflowing plate, and I am reminding her that this isn't adding to it. And, it's, and it doesn't make me feel icky to do that. In fact, it makes me feel light. It makes me feel good because I have a solution for her. And I'm telling you, I was that busy mom. Frig. If you looked on your Facebook or on your Instagram and you looked at that busiest person, I mean, I worked in a daycare during the day. I did meal prep for people. And I don't even know when I did meal prep for people. <laughs> I don't even, I couldn't even tell you because I went to work at six. My husband was always away or on course. We had babysitters. We had six babysitters, in fact, to just have scheduled while we worked. So I need you to know that I share this because I'm super passionate about it. And, and people relate to that because of that, right? But for you, you need to realize what your top, top, five thing, top five reasons are and people will relate to that too. You know, people will join for different reasons. 
one of my top five now is I love being able to work when I want. And that's a current one. And I love sharing about that. I love sharing about my day-to-day, you know, appointments, errands, coaching soccer, um, picking the kids up at school, you know, God forbid if they get a hangnail and you got to go down and get them. But this top five list will, you know, will help you share about the rep opportunity intentionally and without feeling salesy. It will be you authentically and people will relate to it. And that's just super, you know, that's just super important to remember. Okay, we're almost done. But another reason I love and I'm effective at recruiting is because I'm passionate about it. And like I said, like that, there's no shadow of a doubt when you go on my Instagram or on my Facebook, I'm a Zaya rep and I'm growing my team. That is very clear, very obvious. When someone's leggings are falling down in Target, I want them to think instantly Sarah Bernard, the black pocket light and tights, because she talks about it constantly. Okay, like that is, and it's a funny story. So I have to tell you something, it's very short, but I actually have a nickname on my larger team. and there's a backstory here, but they call me Sarah the Psycho. I believe it's a, it's in a loving way. I take it as a loving way. However, I shared a story with them in a recruiting like 18 months ago. And I said, picture grade five, picture grade five, you're there again. <laughs> it sucks. And they're picking teams for dodgeball. Okay. And you, you got your heart going, upper lip sweat, you are ready. <laughs> I want you to be the one who's picked first. You have to make it known so much that there is no shadow of a doubt they need you on their team. So that's what, that's the way that I approach this business is that there is no shadow of a doubt. I love this. I'm in it and I love sharing about it. And no, you don't have to be psycho like me, but you do have to make it known. And I feel like that makes it so much easier because you give per- people a permission and a space to talk about it with you. So be c- so confident that you make it a no brainer for people, right? I told this story once, like I said, 18 months ago, and it's, it's been, I, Allie got me a t-shirt that's a psycho on it in Hawaii. I refuse to wear it. Anyways, here's, here's where we get to the juicy stuff and it's not going to take long, but four ways to recruit. This is the four ways that I recruit. Lots of different ways to do it. The first one is the people you already know and no, you did not, you haven't gone through your war market yet. You haven't not, you haven't gone through your war market yet. The people you know, and it's, and it grows, right? Your network is always growing. Um, you can't decide for them. I, I used to make assumptions and be like, oh, she's probably not going to do it. Or, oh, no, she wouldn't do it. You can't make these assumptions for people. You have to actually ask them because I've had so many times where it's like, well, I thought you never asked or you never brought it up with me. I didn't think you wanted me. <laughs> so the people, you know, first one. It helps um, you asking them as well. You asking them in anybody, like not just the people, you know, but you bringing it up to anybody in your life at any point is this first step into pouring belief into them. Because I'm telling you, there's probably not very many people in their corner or they may not feel like that. So you asking them to be a Zaya rep is probably being like, they're like, well, no, I can't do that. But you, that's the first step into pouring belief into them and being like, well, I think you could. I think you'd rock it. And I feel like that's so important. I think that's missed sometimes. The second, you know, it's human nature to say no. It's human nature to think you can't. But it's, it's awesome when someone thinks you can't. And that sticks with you and that's planting the seed. The second way that I recruit is parties. I freaking love parties. I love them genuinely because you're like, what? She doesn't. She's a liar. <laughs> they get rid of the unknown. I, I don't like, I am very much like a, this is, this is it. This is the real deal here. And the parties for me get rid of the unknown. It, they see me doing the rep opportunity. They see me doing it. You know, I share about my day to day. I, I make it so that it looks and is feasible. It's like, there's nothing extra needed to be a Zyra because I'm a Zyra. And in my parties, I, I talk about it three to four times in a party. One party, I talk about the rep opportunity at least three to four times. I feel like I share it as an equal part of this business. And that's why for me, recruiting has not been a challenge because I share it as an equal part of this business. I talk about it before the bomber bro. And I love the bomb, but I talk about the rep opportunity first. I show people that it doesn't require anything special. I have two non-negotiables. These are things that I've lived about for, for over two years. Every order gets booked in for a party or, or that conversation happens. Every single order. I don't care if you're my mom's cousin, it's happening. We're booking you in for a shopping event. And then the second one is every hostess gets the rep opportunity conversation. This should be a no brainers. This should be automatic in everyone's business. And guess when that rep 
opportunity conversation happens. It does not happen during the party. It happens before the party because I'm telling you on day three of the party, she already has her credits used up. You've already been showcasing the best of the best. She has her list ready. It's too late. Talk about the rep opportunity before the party starts and when you book her in for the party. That way she knows and she's prepared and she's like, oh yeah, I'd like to use my credits for that you know, starter kit or bundle deal. I think that's super important. Be real in parties. If you feel like they're, you know, if you're using Visly or SynShare or Post My Party or whatever, make it sure to be you, okay? And it's not super autom automated. You know, people don't want that. They're, be you, have some fun. Um, and get people into your VIP, even if they don't purchase. Third, third way is customers. I, you know, repeat customers, new, doesn't matter. Like I said, anytime I get an order notification, I book them in for a party. I talk about the rep opportunity from that conversation usually. I just say, you know, hey, you got to consider this 25% off. You're, you know, you're, you bought the light and tights, but I know your wish list is probably bigger than that. You're going to love this stuff, that kind of thing. I just, it's subtle. It's not, you know, it's not me asking them right away, but I'm just bringing it up as such. And then the fourth uh, way I recruit is, I call it the real world, but it's not at all, actually. It's through your stories. It's public. You know, you're wearing the clothing, you're talking about the, the brand, and you're reaching out to people. For people who watch your stories, go and look at the people who watch your stories. Start conversations with them. They're watching your stories. They're probably intrigued or nosy, and that's fine too. Pour belief into people, encourage them, and tell them they can do this too. I feel like that has helped. Um, I'm quite confident in this, and I feel that helps. Um, and so I pour belief into them right from the beginning. Objections. It's literally one page left. Objections. Um, people's natural reaction is to say no. Um, and this is a funny story. I often do recruiting trainings, and I never bring up objections. I never talk about it. I never train on it. But I have a page here, and I figured... <laughs> Maybe it'll come up in a question. Um, I don't really feel like people have objections. I feel like their objection is their reason why they should do this. So if they tell you an objection, it's a conversation. That is, that is open to conversation and that's continuing the conversation. If they say, well, no, I don't have any money. Okay, that's gonna be their why, because that was me. If they say, well, no, I don't have anybody to support me. Then geez, gal, you need this community. Frig, you, you don't have support? I'm telling you, you're going to get support here. They don't think of it like that. They think they need this big, huge following. They think they need this, you know, all these people are going to buy. If they say they, you know, they don't have time, that's her objection. Well, that's going to be their why then. People are, are if they answer, you know, if they're not ghosting you, if they say, well, I can't do it because, we can work with that. And, that, and that's worth a conversation because they're sharing with you about why they think they can't. A lot of it comes down to, you know, lack of confidence or they don't have belief in themselves, all of which you can help by just making them feel good, by adding that little extra, okay? By, by making sure it's positive, okay? Even if it's a no, even if it's a hard no, I love on them. I, I meet them where they're at and I help them take the next step. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then things to leave, we, leave you with right now, just things I, I sort of wrote down at the end, but if you're trying to grow your team, you have to start talking about it. I find that a lot of people do the graphics and they do the work, but they don't actually talk about it openly. And, you know, in just this, like not, you know, a video, not graphics or not, it, just go on your stories and talk about it. And I feel like when that happens, people can see you and feel you and, and relate to you and it, and it makes a difference. Um, share about the rep opportunity as in like share about the benefits of being a rep, making sure to do that a lot because people need repetition. Um, also, your list and my list of the benefits of this, this business can be very different. We all have different. We all have different lists. And that's the that's the reason why it works so well. So keep that in mind. Um, realize mindset is everything. I'm sure this is talked about on, a lot on this team. I mean, I have a huge mindset thing that I go with recruiting, but I, I feel like it's talked about a lot on this team. So I, I didn't really include it, but I shared this story with my team recently. It was last week. And I just want to leave you guys with it. Um, and it's a true story. <laughs> it's not a feel good story, but it's a true one. And it's crazy. There was this man who was fixing an AC unit 
in a storage container, like the freezer compartment to, for a freezer storage container. And because it wasn't working pro properly. And after he tended to the problem, he ended up getting locked inside of it. And he tried with all of his might, so no cell service in there. He tried to get out for hours, I guess. With, uh, with no hope, he started to get desperate and he wrote a goodbye letter to his family, his wife. And he wrote a note on the wall as well. He, he wrote about freezing to death, not wanting to freeze to death. And I know I'm going to freeze to death. And then, you know, the AC unit's working, it's getting cold, all this stuff. The next day, when they opened the container and they found him, the autopsy showed he died from natural causes, as the freezer compartment wasn't working. The AC unit was never on. He was in there for, they said, 10 hours, but he died from natural causes. He never fixed the compartment. He got locked in, but he thought that it was working. And he thought that he was going to freeze to death. And he died. A healthy man. I mean, I don't know. He probably ate, ate French fries in Greece all the time. But I mean, he died a healthy man because he thought he was going to freeze to death. His letter stated he knew he was going to die and there was no hope, etc. Mindset is such a powerful thing. And this is what I really want you to remember. It's not just some minds that are powerful. It's not just the minds that, that are successful that are powerful. It's everyone. Everyone's mind is so powerful and you are so capable, especially when you're, you're going through this struggle period. You're so close to that breakthrough. And I, I, I want you to remember to set your intentions, make it known, share about it, share the excitement, stop making it about you. <laughs> tell my team this all the time. If you're trying to recruit, stop making it about you. It has nothing to do with you. You get to just share about this amazing opportunity. People get to take advantage. Keep doing that. Repeat. And recruiting is just such a huge mindset and making sure you're in the right mindset. And you're going out and doing it. Small, consistent action. Don't worry about mass action. That doesn't work. <laughs> but filling that funnel, that's little, tiny, consistent action. That is little, tiny, just doing that extra thing. And, and it's not, it doesn't cost extra to do that extra thing. It doesn't, go, it doesn't take any more time. And I, I think that's it. I hope you guys have questions. I hope I didn't upset anyone with my paramedic stories. Your stories were what made it. I loved them. The super emotional call. Did you guys agree? You feeling all the feels? Yeah. Um, Sarah, I have a feeling people are wondering this, so I'm going to ask it. When yes. you're talking to people now, are you thinking about them joining your team in six months? You're not, you know, you, you get three every single month, but when you're talking to somebody now, you're probably thinking of them for down the road. Like you've been planting seeds, you're planting seeds all the time, right? Love this. Okay. So you think, so I get this question a lot too, where, where it's like, well, so you're strategic and that's how you get your three. And like, people are like obsessed over, over this. Like, well, how do you get the three every month? <laughs> so when I have a continuous funnel that just happens. And I mean, some of it I'm sure is strategic, maybe without me knowing, but if I have three already this month, so if someone came up, I have three parties booked next week. If someone's like, well, I want to sign up, let's do it. Signed, I recruited four last month, month, five the month before. So I don't stop at three and wait. Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm not mm -hmm. like, well, I have my three, so I'm, I'm going to wait. You're going to be next month. I just feel like this abundant mindset mm -hmm. goes so far and I don't have the capability. I don't have the vocabulary to be like, well, I can't, I can, you can, everyone can. And there's so many people out there who would benefit from this. So I never think. That's so um, good. I never think I have to wait. I never think I have to save them, right? Because I think that, that makes it about them and not you, right? Like yes. being yes. strategic and moving them makes it about us. But yes. she's saying if yeah. somebody's ready, just sign up. And also, yeah. be, so basically, Sarah, your funnel is just constantly drip, drip, dripping into your business because you spend so much time working on filling your funnel. So it's just a continuous, beautiful drip, right? Yes, I, I share it. And, and we talked about this in Hawaii, you asked me and I literally answered like, right away, I share it as an equal part of this business. And mm -hmm. I feel and I, I don't mean to be rude, but I feel a lot of Zaya reps don't do that. Mm -hmm. They share about the amazing bomber bra, the light and tights, you know, and they talk about parties. And that's great. But the rep opportunity is like, Oh, yeah, by the way, you could do this. No, I do that first. 
that is the foremost thing that I talk about. That is the thing that's changed my life the most. So I talk about that first, like all the time. And I feel like that is the thing. And I mean, if you're thinking, well, I need to start doing this, or I need to start, you know, I need to do something. Don't feel like mass action helps. Just start. What I want you to do is focus on that small thing that you can do consistently and really consistently and really just literally it will take you between 30 seconds and two minutes a day. And I'm telling you, if you start doing that every day, it makes a huge difference. So good. Can you guys all think of something right now? I just thought of like three things like, okay, what I can do yeah. in one minute a day, because you're yeah. right. When you, when you decide to take Mac mass action, it just, you burn out and then it it's doesn't, exhausting. Yeah. It doesn't go anywhere. I do had a challenge. I did a hundred days. I wanted to share about the opportunity. This was January, 2019, no, 2020, 2020, January, 2020. I was like for a hundred days, I'm going to share about the opportunity. This was pre COVID every day. And I went from that list, the top five things I liked about being a Zyra rep. And so every day I sort of reflected on one of those things in some way or another. It's not like, join my team today, join my team the next day. No, it was like, oh man, uh, Isabel hurt her knee at school, which sucks, but I have to take her to a bunch of physio appointments. And this is me talking on my stories about, I, I love that I'm able to just do that and we can schedule it in and, and I'm able to come and work my business when I want and just things like that. I feel like people need to see that more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somehow I think reps, we find it easier to share about the clothes because that somehow doesn't feel that's not as vulnerable, right? It's yeah. like, I just, yes, all these clothes. but if I'm Love asking that. you to join my team, it's like, it's like me, like I'm on the line. It's not the products I sell that are out here. It's me. And recruiting, awesome. you have to be vulnerable to be recruiting. You have to be. I actually I can look at I have that written down somewhere. I love that. I love that you said that. And so you, you have to be. You have to open yourself up a little bit to to be able to recruit and to have that big funnel. We talk about the throw up factor. Like if you if it if you kind of feel like you're gonna throw up yeah. doing it, you probably should do it. <laughs> I have upper lip sweat. I always get yeah. up. I'm like I'm ready. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Sarah? You guys can type them in or unmute. How many reps have you signed this month, Sarah? Um, I did three. Three third was yesterday, but I have some some people who are asking questions and these discovery calls. I'm trying to take advantage, although we do our own team like um potential rep call. Um get it, girl. We are cheering for you. <laughs> the most I've done was uh 21 in one month, but that was that was just stupid. <laughs> that was probably a, a it was, it was an hard next month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I did three the next month, but yeah, 21 and then three. Well, I mean, for onboarding. Um, I have a great onboarding system and I can send that over to you and you can look at it too, if you want, but um, awesome. I love it. I do it through Visily. Awesome. So it's like an email drip campaign with everything in a website. And I just, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Love Thank it. you so much, Sarah. We appreciate no it. Everybody loved it. And I'll send you the recording once it's uploaded. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. It was okay. nice chatting with you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Have Bye. a good month, everybody. Talk to you soon.